This is a video from my exam two review in calculus one. The directions say to find the derivative. Simplify your answers where appropriate. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at problem number nine. On number nine, we have y equals natural log of x times the natural log of x. So this is a classic chain rule problem. Now, what's my inside function? Well, my inside function is x times the natural log of x. So I'm going to call that u. Now, what is y in terms of u? Well, y is equal to natural log of u. Uh, dy du is equal to 1 over u. du dx by the product rule is equal to x times 1 over x plus natural log of x times 1, which is equal to 1 plus the natural log of x. dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. That's the chain rule using Leibniz notation, okay? But dy du is 1 over u. du dx is 1 plus the natural log of x. But remember that u is x times the natural log of x. Now we get to put it together. So dy dx is 1 over x times the natural log of x times 1 plus the natural log of x. And that's how we do problem number 9. So Let's take a look at problem number 10. Suppose y equals e to the mx times cosine of nx. Now, what I want to do is I want to find the derivative of each of these functions separately first. So we, we review this. Now, Recall, the derivative of e to the mx with respect to x is equal to e to the mx times the derivative of mx, which is m. Remember, m is constant, okay? And so this is m e to the mx. The derivative of cosine of nx with respect to x is negative sine of nx, and I'm going to multiply by the derivative of nx, which is n. And when I go to simplify that, I get negative n sine of nx. Now we're all set up to take the derivative of e to the mx times cosine of nx. So when I have y equals e to the mx times cosine of nx, I'm going to use the product rule. So dy dx, I'm going to write down the first function. And I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the second function. The derivative of the second function is negative sine of nx times n, or negative n sine of nx. I'm going to go plus, and then I'm going to go cosine of nx, that's the second function, and I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the first function, the derivative of the first function is m e to the m x. 
and I can factor out an e to the mx. And when I do, I get negative n sine of nx plus m cosine of nx. And that's how we do problem 10. Let's take a look at problem 11. Suppose y equals natural log of secant x. And we're going to solve this problem very similarly to problem 9. I'll apply Leibniz notation. Now, my inside function is secant x. So what I'm going to do is let u equal secant x. So expressing y in terms of u, I get y equals natural log of u. du dx is equal to secant x times tangent x. dy du is equal to 1 over u. So dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. This is the Leibniz notation for chain rule. Now dy du is 1 over u. du dx is secant x tangent x. Okay. But remember that u is equal to secant x. So dy dx is equal to 1 over secant x times secant x tangent x. But the secant x's cancel, and we can then conclude dy dx is equal to tangent x. And that's how we do problem number 11. Let's take a look at problem 12. So y equals e to the 1 over x divided by x squared. Now, let's recall. So let's get this out of the way first. We need to know the derivative of e to the 1 over x. So the derivative of e to the 1 over x with respect to x is equal to e to the 1 over x times the derivative of 1 over x with respect to x. Okay, that's chain rule. So this is negative 1 over x squared e to the 1 over x. So now I'm ready to take the derivative of y equals e to the 1 over x over x squared, applying the quotient rule. So when I have y equals e to the 1 over x over x squared, and I want y prime, it's another way to say dy dx. So I'm going to take the bottom function, which is x squared. I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the top function with respect to x, which is e to the 1 over x times negative 1 over x squared. I'm going to go minus, and then I write e to the 1 over x. That's the top function. And then the derivative of the bottom function is 2x. So I multiply by 2x. I'm going to take that result and divide by the square of the bottom function, which is x squared squared. So in the bottom, we get x to the fourth. In the top, we get negative e to the 1 over x, right? Because these x squareds cancel, right? Minus 
2x e to the 1 over x. So what I'm going to do is factor out a negative e to the 1 over x from the numerator. So therefore, y prime is negative e to the 1 over x times. Now, in parentheses, I get 1 plus 2x. And I'm going to take that answer and divide by x raised to the fourth. And that's how we do problem 12. Let's take a look at 13. Suppose y equals secant of 1 plus x squared. So my inside function is 1 plus x squared. So I'm going to let that be u. u is 1 plus x squared. y equals secant of u. So du dx is equal to 2x. dy du is secant of u times tangent of u. Now I get to put everything together. So dy dx is dy du times du dx. So this is secant of u times tangent of u times du dx. And remember that du dx is 2x. So I'm going to put a 2x there. Now, remember that u is 1 plus x squared. So, therefore, dy dx is equal to 2x secant of 1 plus x squared times tangent of 1 plus x squared. And... That's how you do problem number 13. Let's take a look at 14. Suppose y equals the square root of arctangent of x. Again, this is a classic chain rule problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u equal arctangent of x. So y is equal to the square root of u. du dx is 1 over 1 plus x squared. dy du is equal to. Now, if it helps, we can write square root of u as u to the 1 half. Maybe that's more helpful. And so we can apply the power rule cleanly and write this as one-half u to the negative one-half, which is one over two u to the one-half, right? But remember that u to the one-half is square root of u. So dy du is one over two times the square root of u. Now we get to put everything together. So dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. Leibniz is very, very helpful in my view. Okay. And so this is 1 over 2 times the square root of u times du dx and remember that du dx is 1 over 1 plus x squared. But u is arctangent of x. And so if I put everything together, I can say dy dx is equal to 1 over 2 times the square root 
of arc tangent of x, and then I take that answer times 1 over 1 plus x squared. And that's how you do number 14. Let's take a look at number 15. Suppose y equals cotangent of cosecant of x. So the question becomes, what's my inside function? My inside function is cosecant x. So I'm going to let u equal cosecant x. Then y is cotangent of u. du dx is negative cosecant squared x. dy du, oh, let's fix that real quick. Remember that du dx is negative cosecant x times cotangent x. That's what du dx is. And then dy du that's negative cosecant squared of u. Now we get to put it together. So dy dx is dy du times du dx. Okay. But dy du is negative cosecant squared u. Du dx is negative cosecant x times cotangent x. But a negative times a negative is a positive, right? And remember that u is cosecant x. So I, I need to substitute that in. So dy dx is equal to. Now, we get cosecant squared of cosecant x. Cosecant squared of cosecant x. And then I'm going to take that answer times cosecant x cotangent x. And that's how we do problem 15. And let's take a look at one more. We're going to take a look at 16. On 16, we have y equals e to the x secant x. u equals x secant x. y equals e to the u. dy du is e to the u. Okay, so it's a lot of chain rule. Du dx is, now we have to apply the product rule here. Now, in applying the product rule, I'm going to get x times secant x times tangent x. And then I add secant x. Now we get to put it together. dy dx is dy du times du dx. But dy du is e to the u. du dx is this first part, x secant x tangent x. plus secant x. Now, I notice a secant x in common, so I'm going to pull that out. So I'm going to pull out a secant x, and then I'm going to replace u with x secant x. 
So it's secant x times e to the x secant x. And then I'm going to multiply by x tangent x plus 1. And that's equal to dy dx. And that's the answer to problem 16. And so that's a good stopping point. That'll conclude this video for the exam to review. And we worked problems 9 through 16 on this video. Okay, thank you.